Hello everyone and welcome to this Future in Careers video cast. My name is Joe and today I'm joined by Nina Haas, who is the president of Bright Outcome Inc. Bright Outcome develops patient-centered healthcare applications which are designed to enhance the lives of patients and improve their health. And one of Nina's latest projects has seen her work with Dr. Paula Gardner from the University of Massachusetts Chan Medical School and the Center for Mindfulness and Compassion at Cambridge Health Alliance. And they've been developing uh, the Gemini platform, which guides patients with chronic pain through a mindfulness-based stress reduction program. So, hello, Nina. Thank you for joining me on this Future and Careers videocast. How are you? Good. Good, thanks. Good. Thank you for being here. Um, why don't you start off by giving us a little background about yourself and about uh, how your career has led you to become the president of Bright Outcome, sort of from school through to where we are now. To now? Um, okay, well, let's see. I would say it started probably when I was five. I mean, that's like really early, but I knew I um, had a real interest in people and um, wanted to know more, basically. And I studied anthropology through college, and I did that for my undergraduate. And then I got a graduate degree in social and cultural anthropology with an emphasis on applied anthropology, which is applying the tools of anthropological inquiry to real world problems. So it's um, trying to make the world better. And it gave a frame to really explore and understand how to do that. Um, I was also really interested in computers and computer um, methods like computer modeling and agent-based modeling. So I um, focused a lot on that as well, and which kind of helped because now I'm with a technology company. Um, but it started to see, you know, when I was going to school, it's really when everything started to expand for the internet. So people started to realize, oh, maybe technology can help with communication and it could help with, um, you know, keeping track of different symptoms or doing this or that to solve some problems. And it was just a real natural fit. I started, um, I moved into the work with Bright Outcome through working at the university. So before I was an anthropologist at the university here, where I live and um, and I was doing anthropology. You know, what I love, I gotta do what I love. And I was um, working on problems with indigenous governance and um, urban poverty, climate change. And then um, I was working with the Cancer Center on some projects and the Bright Outcome had a study at the Cancer Center where I was at and it just kind of started from there. I started working on one of their projects and um, it was a really good fit. And it yeah. ended up fitting better than staying at the university. <laughs> <laughs> nice, and uh, could you give us an idea of what your like your day-to-day -day job role as a president of a, of a company like Bright Outcome, what kind of things are you getting up to during the day? It's everything, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's not one thing. Um, I... I spend a lot of time reading. Um, yeah. I read literature a lot. I read uh, news releases. I read the news. I see what people are talking about to kind of get a feeling for where um, different um, movements are starting and to see like, well, people are saying there's a problem in this area um, and to be like, oh, I wonder if we could find a solution for that. I wonder if we could solve that. Um, so I would say a good amount of my time is reading, talking to people, um, talking to other researchers and clinicians, and just having conversations really about you know what they work on, what they're doing, the things that they've learned, because it is through those kind of connections and reading what's out there that I can start, like for my role, I can start to see like, oh, maybe we can fit in over in this area. Or um, sometimes it's kind of trying to predict funding um, mechanisms or priorities that might be coming out too, because if people start talking about it a lot, then usually there's some funding opportunities that come up which we like to use for our research, right? Because we do research even though we're a company. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, and a lot of time is spent on meetings. Just, yeah. I would love to have a clone because, uh, <laughs> God, there's, there's days, you know, it's just back to back and, uh, and it, you know, sometimes it's, it feels kind of, I feel, I wouldn't say it's sad because I don't necessarily, um, regret any of my choices, but there's times where I'm like, wow, I'm really far away from where I started <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like I'm dealing a lot with, um, putting out fires or finding things or working, you know, keeping team dynamics working really well. Um, and, yeah. and those times where I'm like, oh, I miss just doing interviews with people. So what do you do in those times when you're feeling maybe a bit, a bit bummed out or, you know, stressed or just meetings all day? Do you have any ways of sort of keeping going and keeping, you know, keeping things on track? Um, usually I like to reframe it so that it's not a source of stress, but a source of gratitude. Like, thank God I'm really busy. Because, you know, that means I have things to do. You know, that, that means what we're doing is important to people and they want what we have to offer. So thank God. Like, it's better that I am uh, busy and tired and feeling like I don't have enough time in the day than um, twiddling my thumbs. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you're not sitting around just waiting for stuff to come to you. You've, you know, I guess part of your job is to keep yourself, you know, if you're busy, then you're doing your job your job right because you're finding all those opportunities um yeah so when you when you do feel like yeah. oh, do you how do you recover how do you recuperate how do you like outside of work when you get a chance how do you sort of rebuild that energy um i i find a lot of peace with my family and my friends you know that i really enjoy the social connections that i have um, and it's not huge, you know, it's, it's really hard to keep a good circle of people if it's big, you know, so it's not like it's a giant circle, but the people that I know I can count on and, um, mean a lot like the guys talk to them daily. You know, I work out, I find, um, you know, external interests. Sometimes it's just taking a moment and catching the sunset, you know, and being like, wow, it's really beautiful today. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Getting influence from outside of work, from your friends, your family and uh, finding peace. I think that's what you said. That's uh, yeah, important. Um, so is, are there any other traits or characteristics or uh, sort of outlooks that you have on life that, that have helped you succeed in your career? Tricky question. Well, yeah, well, it's not. Yes. I mean, it's a bit tricky because sometimes it's the things that can be really <laughs> annoying to managers <laughs> or to someone <laughs> else. Um, I think some of the things that, that help is I'm pretty tenacious, um, you know, and it's just like a failing, failing doesn't bother me. Um, and I think that's one of the most important things to learn is that there really is no failure. It's just you try again. And most people have to try again a lot before you get somewhere. Um, so I would say the persistence and the tenacity, I'm just, um, I can be incredibly stubborn once, like, not, not necessarily toward people, but, like, once I set my goals, you know, and I'm like, okay, like, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Um, and I would say uh, some optimism. I've been, you know, I'm an optimist, so, oh, yeah. It helps me. <laughs> I'm glad I am. Yeah, it's a, it can help when you're struggling, when things are feeling like a bit overwhelming uh, to be able to think, oh, well, you know, everything's everything's going well. We're on track. I think, yeah, you, like a determined kind of outlook, you know, not sometimes things aren't going to work out, but you keep going, you keep trying. And uh, yeah, you'll end up yeah. where you need to be, whether it's where you thought you were going to end up in the first place or somewhere different. Um, yeah, throughout like your career... Yeah um has that happened have you ended up in places that you didn't think you would i mean i guess you didn't necessarily think you'd be in the sort of health uh, technology sphere when you started anthropology but yeah i think most of the time i end up in places i don't expect <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> you know like i've i've often say that um i don't like to plan things to a detail 
because I'm always going to end up somewhere I never expected. And if I put a, a plan in place that's really fine combed, you know, like my tech team can fine comb that, but like for direction or grand vision or um, kind of like where you want to be, if you really hammer it down into like a really small detailed space, a lot of times you get kind of, um, I would say limits. It limits what the possibility is. And maybe an opportunity comes that you think won't really fit this goal or direction you have, but that opportunity actually opens a lot more doors um, into a space that's more um, aligned with what you want to do. It's like an adventure. Yeah. If you have too much of an idea, then you might block out things that you didn't think would fit, but actually that might have been the next door to go through that you didn't realize. Um, so do you have yeah. any other advice maybe for students who are thinking about pursuing a career in, in healthcare technology or just in STEM more generally, or even just, you know, leaving high school and not sure where they want to go next? Um, let's see. So usually, because I have a lot of <clears throat> young people of similar age in my home, you know, that I um, mm. am around. And it's usually the advice is you're not really going to mess up. So then anything you do is kind of good, right? Yeah. Um, even if you do something and you know, you know, at the end you're like, oh, God, I really hated it. Well, you know, you hate it. <laughs> at least you know that. Um, I would say if you can, I know the UK is a little bit different than the US with courses and um, being able to um, select a, a field of study and everything. But talk to people. You know, most, most professionals are happy to talk to people who are interested in the work. Um, and if you are a good listener, people will talk to you forever, right? So just talk to people. If you're like, oh, I'd really like to do, um, you know, healthcare technology, or I'd like to do this kind of healthcare research, um, you know, with MBSR or whatever topic, find people that are doing something kind of similar and contact them and just say, you know, I have some questions, I'd like some advice and talk to a lot of different people. And if some people are jerks, don't take it personally because people can be jerks. <laughs> so, you know, like you, you just kind of like, all right, you're having a bad day, man. All right, I'll move on <laughs> to someone else. Um, but that would be my advice is talk to people and, um, you know, and, and don't give up, really. Yeah, great. So talk to people and, yeah, don't give up. And, yeah, like we said, you know, you might not end up where you thought you were going to end up, but I think you said, yeah, you can't mess up. You, you're going to end up somewhere and chances are you'll be, you'll be doing just fine wherever it is that you, that you end up. Um, mm -hmm. Well, so I think we're almost starting to run out of time here. Um, I've got one more question, but is there anything else that you wanted to just pop in um, before I ask that? that you, you wanted no, to know? I'm interested no. for this next question. Oh, I think you're going to like it. So it's a, a question I ask, I ask everyone um, just to sort of round things off. Um, so the question is, if you could be any animal, what animal would you be and why? <sighs> I, I would probably like to be a peregrine falcon. Oh, yeah just so I could dive really fast. Something you can't do as a human. It's just, that would be pretty cool that you're not gonna dive, but you can like <laughs> plummet to the earth and see what that's like. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, as a human, if you're plummeting to the earth, it's probably gonna be a bad ending, but if you're a broken falcon, that's just that's just a good time. That's just fun. <laughs> exactly, nice. so that would be, yeah. that would be kind of cool. Cool, well, that's a great answer. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all we've got time for, really. But thank you for joining me, Nina. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, for anyone, anyone watching at home or in the classroom, uh, you can find out more about Nina and her work with Bright Outcome uh, by heading to her Future and Careers website and downloading her resources. Uh, so thanks for joining us. And I'll see you again next time on the next episode of the Future and Careers videocast. <laughs>